Hi there, I'm Leanne Vanderputten, mother of 11, grandmother of 43 and counting, from Finer Femininity, where I share with you tidbits of old-fashioned goodness and wholesomeness to help us on the path to being joyful, traditional, feminine Catholic women. Today we're going to talk about starting the new year right, and on the right foot, maybe with a few resolutions along the way. So as we begin our journey through the year, it's like a fresh book with 365 blank sheets of paper. A beautiful volume, a book just waiting to have its lines filled. These sheets have possibilities, incredible possibilities that, when filled with worthy and noble, sincere and optimistic ideals, can result in a growing of character, an increasing of knowledge, and a deepening of our faith. So what will we write on these pages this year? If we try to tackle too much, it can be overwhelming. So it's good to make some simple but focused resolutions that are doable. If you have sat down and thought out these things you want to change, that is great. I'm here to help you if you are floundering a bit. What are the things that will help us to grow in our vocation this year? What decisions do we have to make in order to become a better woman wife, and mother. These are the things we want to write in our yearly manuscript. They don't have to be big changes, not at all. In fact, it is those small things repeated every day that will make the difference at the end of the year. Aristotle says, quote, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit, end quote. St. Anselm says, quote, O God, let me know you and love you so that I may find my joy in you. And if I cannot do so fully in this life, let me at least make some progress every day until at last that knowledge, love, and joy come to me in all their plentitude. End quote. And keep in mind what St. Therese of Lisieux says. Quote, I am only a very little soul who can only offer very little things to our Lord. End quote. So here are three suggestions to help us write worthily in our books this year. Number one, out with the bad and in with the good. Winter usually brings with it sickness, and we have had our fair share this year with the grandchildren, well, the parents too. So in Kansas, the weather can quickly get mild, and when it does, the windows will be opened to let the germs out and the bad air out and the good air in. Researchers in Peru noted it's simply harder for a virus to hang around long enough to make someone sick when there's a constant rush of fresh air, either because you're in a room with open windows or you're completely outside. So if our souls are sick or just weary from all of the bad news out there, then why not for this year then open up the windows of our minds to let in the fresh air of good reading, good sermons, uplifting websites, etc. Let the germs and stench out by refraining from filling our minds with an overdose of politics in the church and outside of it, or whatever else it brings us down in spirit and is not necessary for our daily life. From Searching for and Maintaining Peace by Father Irala, quote, To struggle often means opposition between those thoughts that originate in our own spirit or the mentality of our surroundings or even sometimes from the enemy himself and which causes disquietude, fear, discouragement and on the other hand those thoughts that could comfort us and reestablish our peace. In view of this combat, happy is the man who has filled his quiver with arrows of good thoughts, that is to say, with solid convictions based on faith that nourish one's intelligence and fortify one's heart in times of trial." End quote. So how do we fortify our spirits? By listening to depressing news? I don't think so. It's by filling our minds with wholesome and godly thoughts. Philippians 4, 8 says from the Douay Rheims, For the rest, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever modest, whatsoever just, whatsoever holy, whatsoever lovely, whatsoever of good fame, if there be any virtue, 
if any praise of discipline, think on these things, end quote. If we work on this each day of this new year, then come December, we can look back and see that we have grown in our character and in our faith. It's the little decisions each day that will make this change come about. Number two resolution to help us write worthily in this year's book. Can we go to daily mass more? There is nothing more powerful, more healing, more problem solving than attending mass and receiving our Lord. He is the problem solver. Do we want more peace, more joy, more love in our hearts? Let's go to Mass there to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Do we want our longings to be fulfilled? Let's make our way to Mass. From Jesus, our Eucharistic love, quote, Once one realizes that Holy Mass has infinite worth, he is not surprised at the saints' eagerness and care to attend it every day and even more often when they could. One day, St. Pio of Petrocina said to a penitent, If men were to understand the value of the Holy Mass, for every Mass such crowds would come to church that police would be needed to keep order. When St. John Birchman's was still a young boy, he would leave his house every day to go to church at the first break of dawn. Once his grandmother asked him why he would always leave so early. The holy youth responded, to win blessings from God, I serve three Masses before going to school. A mother of eight, St. Margaret, Queen of Scotland, went to Mass every day and brought her children with her. With motherly care, she taught them to treasure a little missile which she chose to adorn with precious stones. Let us manage our affairs so well that we will not lack time for Holy Mass. Let us not say that we are too busy with chores for which Jesus could remind us Martha, Martha, thou art troubled about many things, but one thing alone is necessary. When one really wants to, one finds time to attend Mass without failing in one's duties. St. Joseph Catalango recommended daily Mass for everybody, for teachers, nurses, laborers, doctors, parents. To those who objected that they did not have the time, he replied firmly, bad management, bad economy of time, and he knew this generally was the truth. If we but appreciated the infinite value of the Holy Mass, we would be very desirous of assisting and would try in every way to find the necessary time." End quote. We may not see the results right away, and certainly we may not feel them, but they will be there, and we will notice. So that being said, we may not be able to make it to Mass. I know what it's like raising a large family, homeschooling, etc., so then let's take time to make a spiritual communion more than once a day. It is very efficacious and gives much grace. Again, from Jesus, our Eucharistic love. Quote, spiritual communion, as St. Thomas Aquinas and St. Alphonsus de Liguori teach, produces effects similar to sacramental communion according to the dispositions with which it is made, the greater or less earnestness with which Jesus is desired, and the greater or less love with which Jesus is welcomed and given due attention. A special advantage of spiritual communion is that we can make it as often as we like, even hundreds of times a day, when we like, even late at night, and wherever we like, even in a desert or in an airplane. Jesus himself told St. Catherine of Siena in a vision how precious a spiritual communion is. The saint was afraid that a spiritual communion was nothing compared to a sacramental communion. But in the vision, our Lord held up two chalices and said, In this golden chalice I put your sacramental communions. In this silver chalice I put your spiritual communions. Both chalices are quite pleasing to me. And once Jesus said to St. Mary, Margaret Mary Ellicott, the saint so assiduous in directing her burning desires to him within the tabernacle, so dear to me is a soul's desire to receive me that I hasten to it each time it summons me by its yearnings. It is not hard to see how much spiritual communion has been loved by the saints. Spiritual communion, in part at least, satisfied their ardent desire to be united to their beloved. St. Thomas Aquinas once defined a spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the most holy sacrament and in lovingly embracing him as if we had actually received him. 
you can turn toward the Holy Tabernacle and receive Jesus in your heart from anywhere you might happen to be at any time, day or night. And that was from Jesus, Our Eucharistic Love. Here is a spiritual communion. As you can see, it is a short prayer and it can be memorized easily. My Jesus, I believe that thou art in the blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things and I long for thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace thee and unite myself entirely to thee. Never permit me to be separated from thee. Amen. A simple prayer, but so efficacious. And let's remember to call on the name of Jesus throughout each day. How much potency is packed into this one name? It stops demons in their tracks and causes the angels to bend their knees in adoration. It heals the sick and causes the sinner to repent. Power? Yes. We should begin and end every endeavor with the name of Jesus. During the course of your day, do you feel affronted by someone close to you? Say the name of Jesus. Do you feel irritation and frustration? Say the name of Jesus. Do you feel like your opinions are not accounted for and you are upset by this? Say the name of Jesus. Is confidence lacking? Is your self-esteem suffering? Are you experiencing a bout of self-pity? Say the name of Jesus. He knows what we need. He knows how to change our hearts and our way of thinking. He knows how to reach down into the recesses of our very beings, where there are battle wounds and scars, and heal, strengthen, and redeem. What more could we want? It is so simple. The holy name of Jesus, two syllables, also gives us 300 days indulgence each time we say it. And if you want to increase the power, dip your fingers in some epiphany water that is sitting in your holy water font and make the sign of the cross too. Number three resolution to fill up the pages efficaciously of this year's book. We don't need to add prayers if we already have a spiritual schedule set in place, but we can always work on being more diligent in saying the prayers we already say. Let's eliminate distractions if we can, and then patiently embrace those distractions that we can't eliminate. We must just keep trying to authentically lift our hearts to God as we say our prayers. God sees our efforts. Will there be things this year that we find bigger than we can control? Will we have problems that are too much for us? These will be the very opportunities to rely on him who will come and more than meet us halfway. A faith of a mustard seed. That is all we need. Let us ask God for it every day this year. Do we realize the peace we would have if we truly believed? Well, then let's ask for it. We can only live our life one day at a time. Things may happen to us this year that are so painful or confusing that we need to just live one hour at a time, maybe one minute, reminding ourselves that God sees everything, that he loves us, and that he is the answer. And, as my mom has reminded me, all things are passing. So, three things that you can make as your own resolutions. Number one, less news, more spiritual sustenance. Number two, daily Mass if you can, or spiritual communions coupled with the name of Jesus throughout the day. And number three, say the prayers we already say, but say them better. As we progress through this year, let us lean on him more than ever, bringing every problem to him, for he will show us the way to go. And let us remember this powerful serenity prayer. God Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. By the end of the year, when we pick up our daily volume, which will be filled, will we shudder with regrets or sigh with humble satisfaction? It's up to us. St. Ignatius of Loyola used to say, quote, In everything you do, behold the rule of rules to follow. Trust in God, acting nevertheless as if success in everything depended entirely on you and not at all on God. But, employing your efforts to attain this good result, do not count on them, but proceed as if everything were done by God alone and nothing by you. 
Finer Femininity quote for the day. I am convinced that the best way to grow is to bring the sense of freshness and newness of a new year down to the level of each day. For each day is truly a new beginning. Each day is an entirely fresh start, much more so than a calendar year. Waking to greet a new morning is, in a sense, a resurrection. We rise from the grave of sleep to new life. The failures of yesterday mean nothing. What matters is this day, even this moment, and what we do with it. And that was written by the Catholic gentleman, Sam Guzman. Thank you for tuning in today. Come and visit me at my Finer Femininity website. I have a Facebook page too, where I share with you inspiration of all kinds. You can also find me on Instagram. I also have lots of beautiful handcrafted items in my Meadows of Grace shop. Look for those links in the description below. May God bless you and Our Lady cover you with her mantle. Saint Anne, pray for us.